uh, I, I got inspired to interview you and obviously because you are a genius in the field and all this material that, you know, is out there. I thought today I'd start right off the bat with this opening and then we'll just roll from it. Okay. I am just an average uneducated, you know, cause the school system doesn't actually teach you much of anything real Joe or Jolene walking down the road and you meet me. Okay. Here I am. Now I'm open and I'm ready to hear you. How do you approach me, the, the straw man, if I only had a brain? Girl, <laughs> what do you do? How do you tell me that you've got this other reality going on, this alter situation on the corporate realm? Like, what do you, how do you start conversation? We're having coffee. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Teresa. Uh, guess what? I got some news for you. Okay, so that's actually uh, a lot a lot different than if I just passed someone on the street because it would really depend on whether or not I felt the uh, compelling to even engage in someone that is could be severely asleep and not need shaking because some people can't handle uh, a lot of assets and they can actually drown and, and it can hurt them as babes must be given milk and yeah. in due time they can they can take more stuff. So yeah. um, I, I would start off by uh, if, you know, as long as you can handle it, of course, telling you that I am laying the foundation of nature, spirit, and commerce. And those are the three foundations that govern everything in our reality, uh, whether it's physical, metaphysical, conscious, unconscious, false light, uh, true light. Those are the three foundations that govern everything. Now, of course, the creator is not bound by those things, but any and all things are incorporated into that, including spirit. So 40 years, I grew up involved in the natural realm like everybody else. However old you are, that's how long you've been involved in learning the, nat the natural realm. Like animals, we're all walking around trying to figure out how buoyancy and balance and center of gravity and food and fire and you know all these all these little things. And that's the natural realm. And we can spend the rest of our lives just studying and learning and, and growing in that. But there is more to it, aka there is a spiritual aspect to everything. And there's also a commercial aspect to everything. And a very long time ago, I gave my life to the creator because I knew that everything in the natural realm didn't just accidentally happen as we were talking about the uneducated school system that I call the indoctrination camps that trick everybody into believing that we are worthless accidental monkeys that are flying on a ball through space that just somehow act, you know, magically equivocally through equations, try to figure out what the math and probability of that would be. But everybody just accepts it because they were taught that. And that is what is important about teachings. You must teach people in proper manner, in proper fashion. And part of the reason why I actually released all of my knowledge on commerce was because I actually found someone who is going to send people out to get harmed by not understanding the commercial realm. Now, the spiritual realm is one thing. Um, the commercial realm is a whole nother. So spirit is the substance within our flesh suits, our bodies that actually is, gives it life. Now, commerce is the exchange of anything of value, any and everything. I'm talking even my words, intercourse, yeah. interactions, exchange, of course, of money, bills of exchange, contracts, all of that stuff. Commerce is the exchange of those interactions and the guidelines that are agreed upon for them. And it wasn't until um, I was faced with the uh, opportunity to learn heavily in it that everything started to tie together. Like I already knew nature and spirit, but commerce was the glue that solidified the triangle of the foundation that for everything. And in the center of it all is love. And without love, nothing exists so that's uh that's what i would start off telling you yeah well that was a loaded gun so and i get it i know it like but where do you go from there okay so i'm sitting here and i don't know anything it's like well okay well that was a lot gee whiz now what should i do about all this like where what do i do first to deal with this so that i can be like responsible 
So that's a very important foundation to actually understand. A lot of us are governed in the commercial realm due to our lack of knowledge and our lack of wanting to be responsible. And there's a maxim that says that you can either govern yourself or it will most assuredly be done for you. And that is basically where we are all standing as a society because we lean on the state and the and the country to take care of all of our needs and they are taking on the role as parents patre which i typically don't try to speak uh, latin but it means the parent they are taking on the parent of all of us because we are like children literally because we we are uneducated we are bankrupt and we don't know how to engage properly in commerce yeah and when we're sick we want somebody to take care of us who is a doctor who I recently learned from Robert Horton Warcastles that he's a docking agent to a shipping harbor master in a place we call a hospital, which is actually a docked ship. So tell me about that. What goes on in that hospital when you're born? Yeah, so I, I only really trust the, to an extent, the hospitals for doing surgeries. And the reason for that is because everything through the Rockefeller founded uh, companies are based on petroleum based product, aka nature cannot be patented only synthetic and genetically modified things can be patented which is profitable nature is not profitable they don't you don't ever go to a doctor and they prescribe you to eat cilantro or to get fenugreek for your for your deodorant or you know things Ah. that we used to know before that we've all lost because of generational um trickery so in in the In the hospital, what happens usually is our moms are heavily medicated and they get tricked into getting into a contract with the state. And when our children are birthed or born, which is an admiralty term, when they're birthed into the doctor, your mother plays the informant role and she signs in her maiden name as if she's unmarried and there's no child or there's no father. And within seven years, the state claims to be the father of the uh, child. Now, that application gets sent to a registration, which gets recorded, and then an a entity is created that none of us are aware of. An actual corporation gets created for that child, and the name of that child is the one that was put on the registration for or the application, and they turn it into an all capital letter name, and then you have to get a, a, a tax identification number for it, and then you can be engaged in commerce. Um, here in America, it's called the social security number, and I think in Canada, it's a different, but it is the same oh, type setup. Number. Social insurance number. Same. Social insurance. That that social insurance is an insurance for the vessel in order for it to do commerce out in the, in the seas. It's the underwriting. So no, none of us are taught that. And parents, uh, our parents were not given full disclosure, but there's no duty and obligation for the state to give that disclosure, especially when you start engaging in the contracts and involving yourself in the um, processes of using that entity, you are assumed to know what you are doing. That's a maxim in law. If you are going to engage in commerce, you are presumed to know what you are doing. Kind of like getting in the front driver's seat of a car. If you're doing that, you should probably know what you're doing or get out of the car. Yep. So we go into life as grown ups. They call us adults, which means adult, which is a dummy. And that's the root word of the adult world. And they do that intentionally. Um, Those that graduate from their systems, they put on their cap uh, a square. I'm just digressing a small commercial break here. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. But this cap that they put on is a square, right? Over a round lid on their crown. And it's a blockhead. It's basic. And then they take this tassel from one side to the other side, meaning they have been properly converted from the right side of the brain to the left side or whichever it is meaning that they've been you know well indoctrinated enough that they're you know good to go so tell me about so the school system i refer to it as an asylum um personally you know a little bit of an asylum where we were handed off i mean how retarded that we put our children in the care of perfect strangers for their entire childhood eight hours a day, five days a week and we expect that they're going to somehow grow up like us or they're going to get you know, impressed by the family tree and all the impressions. It just, it doesn't make any sense. It never did make sense to me. But okay, so going back to the fact, okay, so 
you have this situation where the mom has been tricked. How long ago did this start happening where this doctor is interloping in the affairs of the mother and father giving birth to their um, offspring in the home? Like once it was in the home, right? The doctor would come into the home is how it used to have. How long has that been happening on the planet Earth? Do you know that answer? So the, the, the birth certificate is the evidence of the articles of incorporation of the entity that was created and, and granted to the state in order to uh, start doing commerce for the bankers that kind of run everything. This biological registration and underwriting of the bankrupt corporations actually started in 1933 for the United States. The leading up to that, there was a lot of different processes that that under underwent, you know, the Federal Reserve Act and stuff like that. But like I said, all the world kind of operates on a similar structure because humans are really the only resource and underwrite everything. The, the world's reserve currency is the United States dollar, which is the petrodollar, and it is backed by our um uh, willingness to continue to work for the corporations. And that's what the bankers, when they set up the Federal Reserve System, said in the 1933 switch. So in 1933, the United States went bankrupt, and they also declared all United States enemies of the state. Uh, Franklin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt updated the Trading with the Enemy Act to include all U.S. citizens as enemies. And since then, that is when the registration of the birth had to start taking place and everything got put into trust. Trust law is the is one of the highest forms of law, and it basically deals with split titles. After 1933, all titles to all property were split. So whenever you register your cars, your house, your guns, your properties, your corporations, all uh, everything's in trust. Our currencies are in trust, the paper, like everything's in trust. And how the trust model works is the state is taking on as the parent, as the equitable beneficiary, and they have the equitable title. And then the U.S. citizen is tricked into being the trustee with the legal title to take care of all of the duties and fees and obligations that the beneficiary requires. So the with banking their signature, just with their signature, that's all they're yeah. requiring. Yeah, well, that's to, to create currency. So Great. how the system works is, according to the thir the second 13th article and amendment to the U.S. Constitution, there is no such thing as involuntary servitude. So authority must be granted. It is something that is conveyed. There is nobody that automatically has authority over you. However, because we are uneducated, aka none of us know that we have this corporation that we're doing business with. That corporation is what the police have jurisdiction over. That corporation is what Child Protective Services and different agencies, that is what they actually have jurisdiction over. And that entity is what has to pay taxes if it is engaged in public for-profit commerce. Now, we, the humans, we are free and sovereign and independent and above all of the municipalities, the government agencies. We are the ones that dictate and they work for us. They are our servants. However, we are tricked into the reverse roles as being the subjects and citizens uh, which a citizen is analogous to being a subject. And by claiming that we are that U.S. citizen or that entity that they have jurisdiction over, they automatically have the authority to do whatever they want to us. But through proper training and understanding, you can you can go and, and lay foundations to say that you are above and beyond that. You can delegate and like a prince or princess. And furthermore, I think of the scripture, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right. And this is the knowledge that it's referring to. And so 100 percent. Right. So it, it's fair in 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 principle, this, you know, hmm, I'll say the word lightly, this fuckery that seems to be going on. It's actually fair in that if it's operating a bunk, amongst a bunch of people that don't actually know the game, as it were, or the system, then it will carry on doing as such. So. OK, so now here we are. I will say I'm pretty certain, speaking for myself, because I was like 35 years um, studying the Bible. And. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to just plug in here, but um, and I, there was a certain part I just could not piece together. 
And so the scripture was lacking and then Corona hit and it was like the spirit, God's almighty spirit moved upon us all. Some, some already knew like yourself and David, my friend knew and such, but then there were others of us who were awakened by the spirit to search out more and find, I believe that there's a large abundance of people who are coming into this awakening and this knowledge. And that's why we're even holding this interview right now is because we want to get that word out and that awakening. I'm going to take a two second moment and plug this little baby in because otherwise it will die. Okay. So on that note, hold one second. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll... okay. This had a low battery warning. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, so in a perfect world, okay, so the parents, the parents, the pair that rent, right? So the mother and father, they um, had an obligation to do what? Aside from not registering the child to begin with, which people who are sovereign and awakening right now are not doing. I know of a family via my friend David, who they had a child this year, this last year. Um, they insisted that the um, the child not be registered and that the father received the child in the hospital. They delegated the hospital to work for them in a nutshell, but there was more to it. But so when this trust, when this trust gets established, um, okay, here's a question. Does it have to be established? Is that an absolute must that this happens or can someone just, you know, be born like Tarzan in the jungle and carry on on the planet? So we, we don't have to, but here's what ends up happening when you are born into the, the dock at the hospital, which kind of got turned into foundlings at a certain year. Um, uh, uh, not not foundlings, but uh, yeah, I think foundling facilities is what they're classified foundling as. Foundling is the word, yeah. Yeah. So um, what, what ends up happening is uh, because it is a registered corporation that is owned and controlled by another corporation that's owned by another corporation, they are bound by the public policy statutes and codes and ordinances that they have submitted themselves to by incorporating under that jurisdiction. And what they are required to do is register a birth. It is illegal to them to not register a birth. So what you can do as a sovereign is basically tell them that the uh the child is not a u.s citizen and you have to talk to a lawyer and they will try to keep bugging you and bugging you but do not give them a name because they have to have a name to create the corporation and they have to um get your consent and if you start waving the they're not a citizen of america or canada or whatever type flag that's outside of their understanding and knowledge, and they will allow you to get out of the hospital. And if they give you any paperwork, you can put a 45 degree angle on that saying, I do not consent to this offer to contract, send that to whatever, whoever requests it. And that's the end of it. Now, what you can try to do is have a home birth too, which sometimes can be dangerous, but you can do a home birth. Wow. And what is suggested at that point because everything is in trust, you want to copy what the big boys do, aka you want to learn how to do treaties and you want to learn how to um, make identification documents and trusts and, and understand yeah. jurisdictions and stuff like that. Yeah. So what you can do is you can create an affidavit of live birth or a, a yeah. deed of live birth. Affirmation or of truth, yeah. You have an affidavit of truth and basically start uh, creating a document of title of the child. And you also can put a uh, an amount if they cross over the rights of the child, basically saying, like, if you uh, overstep the rights of this child, you owe me 600, 700 uh, ounces of silver. You do not want to engage in the public fiat currencies because they have jurisdiction over that. When you start dealing in money of substance, a.k.a. silver and gold or some type of asset backed uh, type of commodity that is outside of their jurisdiction and they cannot uh, claim that you're using someone else's property. So as like I said, you can have a home birth, create a document of title over the child, and then you can put that into a trust or you can create a trust from it in all capital letter name, just like they, they would normally do because the public, uh, in order to do business with them properly, you have to have a corporation to interface with the public because the public is using corporations to, to do and execute all these things. Where did that come from? Where did that- What do you mean? the whole corporation thing like where did that just pop out of one day 
corps or corpse or orations uh, for from the U.S. Basically, all of our history and founding is from the United Kingdom. We got all of our our laws, our policies, because the king is the one that paid and chartered the colonies to come over here. And a lot of people do not know this, but in 1776, we, the United States did not actually gain independence because the king paid for everything. And you cannot have a state succeed from another nation owing in that amount of debt just because they don't feel like paying taxes anymore. So it wasn't until 1783 that the king actually acknowledged the sovereignty and independence of the United States, but they didn't get 100% sovereignty because he maintained the title of arch treasurer and prince elector but the corps the corporations have been started from the very beginning of the united states as far as our history where the virginia company of london is what came over here first on a charter to start uh colonizing <clears throat> but I, as far as where corporations started from the very beginning that is into english king law you know way way back a lot of the sovereigns use uh an entity called a corporation soul which is an office holder like the vatican like the king of england those are corporations called a corporation soul which is a single office held position that is uh ran by a sovereign that has no board of trustees no meeting minutes no uh they only have a successor it's a very unique entity I, I feel like I want to go there. So, so here we are. We're in the 21st century. We have a fiat currency crashing. We have cryptocurrency coming and rising, which is just like a, an, an, an uh, artificial intelligence measurement of the heartbeat of the people, really, which is what money is, too. But this cryptocurrency is quite intricate. Um, and then we have people who are preparing to you know, go back to barter and trade and live in silver and all of that. What? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so there's that, that's sort of the general atmosphere. But it's my understanding that right now, what's going on is that there's a winding up of these estates, and they're closing this book on this reality. And for those that don't get out, you know, by um, taking responsibility for their bond, for their, their James Bond, right? Which is the book of James mm. and the bond all in one and that's the code that I broke on my own and I know it to be true. And so the royal law is what it is. But anyway, no, okay, so where was it? Um, so, so, um, so we have a great divide that's happening right now, right? There's the people who are waking up to this understanding and doing their due diligence and notifying and communicating and rising up and so on. Where is it? What do we do now? Like, what's what's going to happen? Like, where is it at for you right now in light of this narrative? OK, so my what it appears there is a lot of information going on. So it's hard to depict through all of the false stuff that's going on. One of the things is a lot of people have the unlimited amount to say whatever they want. So all of that's bouncing around and, you know, half the people know what they're not talking about. But right. what it appears is that the world reserve currency, which is the U.S. dollar, is getting ready to collapse. And the fake president of the U.S., Joe Biden, is collapsing the economy on purpose and publicly. Uh, I don't really know if he's, he's as brain dead as he's publicly appearing to be, but he's the fall guy. And he is because the, fall guy. the currency... And, and the fact that he falls occasionally is a communication prophetically. He is the fall guy. He's, <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you, that is the visual sign language message there. He is the fall guy. I think he's fallen three times now yeah so the what, what's happening is uh the bankers have set it up like this when we are born and we go into the uh, create this corporation for them it starts getting bonded and traded all over the world and when you get your birth certificate it shows an issuance of that stock number and the last girl i talked to her issuance number and her stock was one hundred fifteen thousand. so she had by the time she had gotten that birth certificate, there's 115,000 uh, issuances of that stock that was being traded all around the world. Now, now typically we, the bankers know that we're going to make one to $2 million of currency for them and pay taxes working as a corporate slave for them in our lifetime. And that's how the system is set up. Now, when uh, everything starts getting traded on the private, no, 
we're not aware of what's going on in the background while we're slaving for the corporations that we have been trained through the indoctrination camps to work for. And that is how the elites have set up the schools for the public to understand just enough to pull the levers, push the buttons, not ask questions about authority, and to basically keep your head down, not think out of a box, and to work the rest of your life yeah, to, to work money for them. Now, that system is collapsing and changing. And what it looks like to me is the BRICS nations uh, have an asset-backed digital currency that they control over 40% of the world's GDP. And once they get to 50%, I think that's going to switch that basically they control the world's domestic product at that point. And because the currency is changing, there is a battle, a spiritual battle going on between good and evil. And there have been many powerful people that say it doesn't matter what government you have in place. If I control the money, I control everything. So right now there is a very large fight that is battling over this currency and who's going to have it how it's going to play out. Now, the elites know that the, the, the fiat currency, which has always failed, it goes through cycles, uh, all money th since Roman time goes through this cycle of asset back to debase to fiat currency. And the elites know that the fiat currency is now on its last leg to fail and, and fall out. And what they are, they are doing is they are saying, we no longer need all these corporate slaves to underwrite and undermine uh, the banking resolutions that were set in place to be our slaves anymore because we're switching the currency. And that is what has rolled out with all these depopulation programs, aka vaccinations, birth controls, chemtrails, uh, weather modifications, GMOs. They're getting us every single way between Wi-Fi, food, everything. So that's um, that's what's happening with the currency, I believe. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, the currency is like a uh, litmus test of the actual physical activity going on in the realm. Yeah. So, so he who endures to the end shall receive the crown of life. Run your race with diligence. And um, I think of the scripture that says, be no longer conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the spirit of your mind. So here we are. Um, come out from amongst her, lest you be partakers of her sin. Mm -hmm. That there is like now that I knew, I used to always think that meant like come out from the false religion and all that, you know, bullshit, fake it and bake it, shake it and fake it, make it fake and <laughs> claim grace on tap religion stuff, which I went through so much of investigating <clears throat> in my 20s and 30s. But here now I understand that it's meaning um, this Babylonian system. So, you know, what do we do? Like practically, okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about me. When I came into the knowledge of this and saw I was, as a mom, a mother of two children, I was moved immediately. Oh my God, I have to protect my home. I have to protect my children, which I'm now realizing or learning is like property. Like, no, I don't think of them as property. I think of them as beings, right? But the, the world is, too, oh my God, I got to protect them. Like, I have no idea. I want them to like, being taken off to some FEMA camp someday because they don't have their house in order, right? And I think I'm not too far off from the truth on that. Because I think that if you don't, I say it to uh, people I try to talk to often, I say, if you own the house, but you don't own yourself, then you don't own the house. Right? Yeah, it's just that simple. Right. So deal with the house, right? That's what David always tells me. Get your house in order. Deal with this being here. And how do I do that? Well, I got to accept and acknowledge. So we do an acknowledgement and an acceptance notification, both to Her Majesty the Queen, who is passed now. So now the king has received one. And all the four governors, which is in our country, we have governor generals. You have whoever you have. Oh, we got secretaries of state of each state. We have um, the secretary of the federal government. It's a very unique, uh, very unique dynamic with the U.S. because there are still sovereign, independent republic states operating in the background that is guaranteed by the Constitution. And you can claim allegiance to one of those and basically create a national corporation, which is outside of U.S. jurisdiction and operate in that. And one of the things that you can do as a sovereign, which one of the definitions means one who can control title to property and a U.S. citizen, a.k.a. whatever our bankrupt entity that we're given from birth is, is not allowed to hold true title to property because it is part of a bankrupt corporation. 
And what you can do is start to express and create trust and entities that are outside of, of all jurisdictions and use sovereign type of money, basically like gold or silver and barter and trade and involve yourself into a different type of um, currency exchange right. to be outside of the system. And once you learn how titles work, um, here, here's the outline. Right now, all the property that is registered to the states that is our cars our houses our corporations guns everything all the stuff that is registered to them they have the controlling title too and if the creditors here in the u.s we use the internal revenue service and all of the funds that each corporation creates gets funneled through the headquarters in Puerto Rico of the IRS that goes to the creditors. And if the creditors ever show up and want to collect on that debt, China is one of the largest uh, creditors of the U.S. If China comes up and wants their currency or their assets, the U.S. has to hand over all of the corporations, the assets, the cars, the guns, the houses, like all that. And they're already setting up uh, shop in certain ways but i don't know how it's going to play out they, they did that through covid that's exactly what went down there is they did come seeking to claim their debt owed and this has been in enacted to some measure and i think that canada was sort of handed off as the sacrificial lamb first right because we're still we're under the wing of the united states and there's no dividing line there that's real and so i think that is what's happened here so with that being said you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. We, we've got, but here's the thing. My mind's eye has been given to a wise and reasonable understanding about all this. And that is no man comes to the father lest the Holy Spirit draws him. Now that I use the word Holy Spirit, knowing that the history of that word holy might um, have some variations, but the great and mighty divine spirit, right? So like you said, when you were awakened, as was I, like, it's like out of the blue, you know, someone told me this or that, but it was me. It was an encounter I had with my atmosphere, much like the, the, the seed that sprouts, like the sunflower that sprouts through the dirt and it just keeps pushing towards that sun and all of a sudden it's there, right? Like ooh, that's in the creation. Nobody can take credit for that. That's just happening. So I believe that that is the same case with the field of beings, human beings, at large, all dynamics considered. So I put a lot of faith and confidence and trust in that. What I want to say, we both, both agreed and understood that there's a lot of people that have come into this knowledge and, and immediately they're like, whoa, what do I got to do to get the money, right? This, this trust that's got, you know, these millions of dollars attached to me. But, you know, like let's, I knew right away, I immediately understood, whoa, first of all, I'm not going to be moved into that until I'm to the management and the delegation of any of that until I'm mature and ready and balanced and capable and equal to it. And that came to me, interestingly enough, by the spirit. David also taught me some things too that balanced that out and, and, you know, made comments like, I think, you know, you gotta be ready to drive the Ferrari, right? Like it's a lot of power mm -hmm. to understand these great things globally. Right. So, um, Anyway, that's not my motivation and interest. My motivation and interest is to restore this broken earth and to see thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And resources are needed. So however that happens, it is. And in the meantime, I want to prove myself to be um, capable and cognitive and understanding and, and, and seeing, um, being no longer conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind, right? And showing that I uh, can come into the light and do just that. Um, we Okay, here's the thing. We we agree with the system when we, we go, and social insurance numbers assigned to you at the point of birth, when we go to get our driver's license, that's our first act of adulthood. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, actually, a lot of people start off here at 16 starting to engage in for public profit commerce working for a corporation and they have no clue about how the IRS works because none of us were taught that for a reason the the elites do not want a, a group of well-educated 
hard thinkers. They want just people that work with their head down and their eyes closed. So we've never been taught about international commercial law, about postal regulations, about how jurisdiction works or, or courtroom mechanics or tax codes or, you know, all, all of these things that you feel like would be absolutely necessary. Now, there are schools that are training some of the elites from the jump, aka Skull and Bone Society and certain other like Masonic stuff that yeah. uh, at a certain degree, they, they yeah. teach you this stuff as 101. But when a child in the U.S. reaches the age of 16, their parents didn't know that they had a corporation created for them. They don't know that they have a corporation for them. And they start engaging in for-profit public commerce to start that banker's wishes to, to start underwriting the fiat currency and the, the false fictitious system that they created. So um, when it comes to traveling or driving, there's two different terminologies there for a yeah. vehicle. When a, a parent who's uneducated gives uh, their child a to, to go to get a license, they are submitting and uh, to a, an authority to go through all these public policy codes and statutes that that they don't understand about. The car is controlled by the state. If you were to get true title to the car, true title to your, your kid who's operating it, create a traffic or a, a traveling agreement, um, put the car in trust, and then notify the jurisdictions that you are traveling through. Let them know that you are a sovereign individual that uh, wishes to be unimpeded amongst the land. You have true title to your car. Don't trespass, blah, 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 blah. And say, just letting y'all know I'm at peace. I love y'all, but uh, I'm not part of y'all system. I'll be traveling through. Give notice. Then you are basically operating in a sovereign outside of corporate policy and public code jurisdictions and able to be unimpeded through the land. Now, what a lot of people don't understand, and this is actually how I started my public revealing of my knowledge, was because there was someone trying to send people to engage in for public profit commerce without a license, tra traveling in a car that belongs to the state. And just said, y'all, you don't have to, you don't have to license. Just go ahead and just, you know, go and do that stuff. And I'm like, I was like, hold up. No, no, no. There's a lot more to this than you think. And we're all tricked from the very, very beginning on almost everything. The registration of the car, the registration of the birth, the, the submitting of jurisdiction in courtroom, stuff like that. So it's, it's a, a game of knowledge that nobody wants to take the time or effort to educate. And I'm, I've always had this and been able to tell people, but nobody cares. Nobody, they want to watch, you know, funny jokes on TV and they want to, you know, see what Jay-Z's new Nikes are. So, you know, they're not, they don't care about being self-governed. They, they are completely complicit and happy being taken care of by their daddy, the state. You are hundred percent right. And that is what separates the boys from the men. And I know, and the boys from the girls from the women, um, laziness right so we have a we have a system that has put out a really graphic winnowing field for vetting those like beavis and butthead and dumb and dumber and <laughs> sponge bobs right yeah and and whoever re responds to it and they're feeding on it sitting in the seat of scoffers and mockers right mm -hmm. that that be they right and then there's the one in a million or probably who pulls out and much like the day you were conceived and born when you were like that one that landed the mothership and hit the egg in the womb and thus you became right. So at the beginning of birth, you were a winner right off the bat. So now we're in a different race and I see it like that and totally comprehend it um, this way. So my question to you is, should we like, for instance, okay, for, okay, just go into the car thing for a minute. Like, um, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking, okay, well, like if I built my own car or I rebuilt the car I have to such a degree that it becomes mine or like unregistered it or whatever, like I was thinking these things through, what could I do there? Like within the scope, anything? Okay. Short? So what, one thing that you can do is you can decommission your car, tell the whoever controlling it, because you have the legal title to it and you're allowed to do certain things like you can sell it, you can trade it, you can transfer it, but the beneficiary requires that it's tax, tag, titled, insurance, all this stuff. So you can tell them you are piecing the car out. It is decommissioned. It is no longer going to be involved, involved in public commerce. Uh, sorry, you know, just stuff's not working out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
then you could buy a new VIN number from the manufacturer or, or a dash that has a VIN number to it. Maybe they'll give you an MCO or MSO. I have never tested this out as far as buying a new dashboard, but get a new VIN number from the manufacturer that's of your car and tell them you are creating, you're building a car. And the uh, chassis number will not match, but it doesn't matter because you're building your own car. So every chassis number matches the VIN number. And so you have to say you're building your car. Get a new VIN number, get a new dash. Then you can create a title over that, that vehicle if one MCO is not issued to you. And you can create a title and then say that it is yours. You created it. You could change the paint job on it just so it's not confused to be the other car that you used to be traveling in or driving in. Now, create a new title on it, put that in trust, you know, and, and operate outside of their jurisdiction. If you ever get pulled over, like I said, you want to let all of the municipalities know that you're yeah. traveling through and then you have true title to it and there's a value amount to it if they ever infringe on your rights for impeding and blah, blah, blah. Now, another thing you could do is actually build a car from scratch, but a lot of people don't have the currencies to, to build a car from scratch. They don't have currency to buy a new VIN number and they sure don't have enough currency to get a car outright with no liens. And that's how you get the MCO or MSO originally is you, you buy a brand new car, 100% out flat, right. And do not register it to the, to the state and do not get a bank lien on it. Because if you get a bank lien on it, it's uh, going to belong to the bank in the state. Right. So tricky. Hey, so mm -hmm. the system is so tricky. You got to be wise as a serpent. But as gentle as a dove. Peaceful and kind. So, well, um, my understanding is that each one of us are our own sovereign nation. And so when you talk about land, I don't see any other land. I am the land, mm -hmm. my feet are my landmark and I am the vessel in the land upon which I live in. And so as far as the only real estate that I wish to have full authority over and full government over is myself, right? Well, we don't that's, that's good news because you, you already do. And I mm -hmm. didn't give the background on how I started studying commerce, but after doing 10 years of study, I learned that I was free, sovereign, and independent, and independent the entire time, but I just didn't know it. I was deceived into thinking I was a subject slave. I was deceived into thinking that I could take the corporation that was created at my birth outside of their jurisdiction and control it, but you can't. Uh, it is just an entity that you can use. That corporation that they create has many liens on it from the jump. But you can create your own entity to do business with, or you can get side, outside of all of that stuff and get the true land title and grow your own food and barter and trade and be outside of their jurisdiction should, should you show, so choose. Right. So you sound like you just, you're, you're a lot like Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz, right? Who and said, you had the answer with you all along, Dorothy. You could have went home. <laughs> three clicks. All along. Just click those heels three times. Which yeah. is right. Yeah. Right. That's click right. That, knock on that bar. That knock on that table in the courtroom three times before the judge and let him know that you are the executor of the office. Yeah. So, well, like I, I mentioned earlier, you want to be careful being the executor in a public courtroom, and the reason for that is because if you are on the record saying that the estate is dead, which it is, it's just a corporation. But if you are claiming that the entity is in the wrap up phase of needing an executor, you yeah. no longer can use that entity unless you want to be committing commercial crimes. You can no longer use that entity to open up bank accounts or acquire new property or to do certain things unless there has been an expressed trust for the executor that say that they can still do that. But usually when someone dies, all of the assets and their accounts that are tied to that social security number get seized immediately or, or, or are on pause until the executor um, 
extinguishes them and allocates everything and where it's going. So just be careful. It is a get out of jail free wants card, but that once you get on the record saying you're the, you are the executor, you cannot engage in any more new commerce with that entity. But what I typically tell people that you can do is you can be the authorized representative for the estate. That's what it says on the social security card on the fine line. That's what it says on your banking checks on the fine line. It says you are the authorized representative. So everything's in banking when you go in front of the judge. So keep it in banking. Say, hey, uh, even though everything's in trust, colorably, you can tell them that you're the authorized representative for the estate there to set off, settle and close the account because all they need is your signature to create money. It's all a commercial affair. So would that include um, using their system for their benefits like social insurance, social security or their health care system? So here in the U.S., the social security number is a tax identification number, but it also is linked to a federal benefits program. And I have the policies that say anybody who uses a federal benefits program is considered a federal employee. <clears throat> so by using the social security number, the U.S. citizen becomes a federal employee. And, and you don't have to use that entity or that number, but you can. Any uh, public benefits you want to use for your U.S. citizen. You don't want to try to create a sovereign trust and then try to engage in for public benefits because that's what you give subjects and servants is uh, benefits and privileges. And, and that's for a different entity. You don't want to claim sovereignty while using benefits. What if you're forced into it? What if you have... <clears throat> no, never. It's all voluntary. You can't, uh, servitude cannot be compelled. So you mean to tell me, like if in the fact of the, like the commercial, <coughs> realm, like here it is, if we, if you have someone who has become dire and in need and they use the system, which offers us social security, social services, we, we call it um, what you call it, welfare down there. Mm -hmm. We call it social, social development that they that you should not do this the entity that you were given at birth to use can do that that is a state-owned state-controlled corporation that can engage in for-profit public commerce benefits and privileges what i am saying is i would not try to create a sovereign entity or sovereign trust like uh, uh, I had this issue with someone who was getting true title over their child by creating an affidavit of live birth, and then they were trying to express a trust for them, and, I, and then they said, oh, they need to take uh, Medicaid, which is a federal benefit program. I said, I said, hold on, you're you're kind of blurring the lines there. You can't really claim a, a sovereign entity uh, trust on a child and then try to throw that trust into a federal public policy benefits program because you're kind of commingling at That's that point. Right. You're giving you're giving up jurisdiction, but the entity created at birth is, is perfectly fine getting involved because that's what it's a state owned, state controlled, federal, whatever. So then how would that work? You would just be operating in the capacity of administrator or like, it's a bit, that's a bit strange that thought really. And I'm just having an internal revelation, which we can talk about more later on another time because um, yeah, it's either one or the other. Like, okay, let's say you're completely established as you've, you've notified that you are the, the office, you are the executor of the office, right? You're in the office the, of the executor. You are the authorized representative for the estate. Yeah. And that, that does not work very well. Now, see, here in America, all the public officers, all of the public judges and uh, sheriffs and military, they swear an oath to uphold the public policy. <clears throat> and the public is bankrupt, uneducated, and, and wild. They are sworn to uphold and protect that system, which yeah. is wild in itself to want to swear an oath to uphold that, but that's what they do. And sometimes it's scary out there. Police are faced with some brutal situations sometimes. Yeah, it's like but running a daycare. Yeah, for adults, adult daycare. So that's what jails are too. So yeah. when you are facing a judge, his duty 
Same with the lawyers. Their duty and first obligation is to the public and to uphold that system. And then when you come in there, if you've got people behind you lined up, the sheep behind you or people in front of you, and you're like, hey, I'm the authorized representative for the, the judge is going to be upset because you are you are commingling. You're you're putting out p- private asset information in front of sheep that should not okay. be hearing this. Kind yeah, of stuff. you become. Yeah. And I understood that. I so mean, what you want, what you want to do is colorably say if they call the a state's name, which if you're if you're if you never had a U.S. citizen and you're only dealing with a sovereign trust, then you wouldn't even have any duty being in that court begin yeah. with they only have jurisdiction over the the u.s citizen that they created or or whatever citizen that y'all have yeah. um to, to even de- to begin with so if that entity is in there to engage in contractual obligations with the judge you don't want to publicly around people say i'm the authorized representative for the state you want to say something like is it wise to discuss or handle private matters in the public like this and the judge might say something like what and you say uh, or he, he might say something like sit down and then and then if you sit down you're actually giving him jurisdiction you have to say yeah. Yeah. would you like me to sit down and then and then he might stay silent which means he accepts that he's staying colorable in the public to all of the sheep by not letting the sheep know that he works for you it's sort of a bit of a head game hey yeah it's a I court mean, it's a head game court yeah. game it's a court game yeah, it's kind of it's it's a very unique game uh, in court. We're not taught it for a reason. And how it works is words are contracts and they're all offers and you can accept them. And you got to understand jurisdiction, because when you just go in there, a lot of us give up our body as surety on an account. When you go in front of a judge, it's just an account. Everybody wants to take it personal. Everybody wants to take taxes as personal. Taxes are nothing personal at all. It is simply an accounting. You are taxed on how you do business. The, the, the codes and policies say if you're engaged in for-profit uh, public commerce, there's a tax liability. If you're engaged in not-for-profit activities and you can make a lot of money not-for-profit, then you, then you don't have to pay taxes. It's just an accounting system. Same thing in front of a judge. Everybody thinks it's all personal and it's all blah, blah, blah. It's just an account. It is simply an account that has a monetary value attached to it that needs to be settled somehow. Who's going to pay? Right. Well, you know, here's the question in the scripture. Jesus says that he died for our debts. He paid for mm-hmm. our debts. Mm-hmm. What, what did he actually do there? What was the actual story? So forgiving our trespassers uh, and forgiving our debts. So luckily, we don't have to pay debts. And here in the U.S., there is a public benefit that you can actually set off, settle and close accounts publicly by just giving a signature. You don't have to actually pay because there's no true way to pay because there's no money of substance backed by anything of value. The only thing that has any value is our signature and our authorization for them to use our signature. Our signature creates an asset that they can use on their books to monetize. So when you're in front of a judge or you're going to a bank or whatever, our signature is what gives authority to create currency for everybody to be happy. And that's all that basically everything moves on is, is through currency. So so when, it, when the debts have already been paid, like you're saying through the scripture, um, some people say the cross is the T-chart the private asset side is created through our signature. And then on the public side, we are tricked into saying, oh, the court case is $100 and we have to pay $100 for some fines, um, which is basically a, a tribute to a religious cult organization because the judge has on a black robe and you must pay tithes to the priest for your sins. So when you go there, you can either pay with public debt currency notes or which you know debt is sin, or you can pay with your private asset signature and say, you know, I'm here's authorized representative, here's the signature. And then what they do from there is they create bonds off of every court case. Now, fe- felonies are worth millions. Misdemeanors are worth thousands, hundreds of thousands. But they create a bid bond, a performance bond, and a payment bond off of every single court case. And that gets monetized and traded and underwritten and handed. Every court is a not-for-profit corporation that is a bank facility that is authorized to create currencies from uh, our signatures and our authority. Right. And who would have known? (laughs) 
Not me. Well, by, you know, we, in my understanding, I always understood that it was a place for justice and righteousness and to debate right and wrong and settle the score. Actually, so speaking on that is something that I learned. And so a, a lot of the stuff I learned was because of result of, of being uneducated in front of a judge and, and getting, getting handled. And, and I actually started learning the system because of that. Now, when I started breaking down the system and it took a while, I learned that there is a difference between legal and there's a difference between lawful. Mm -hmm. And if you understand what legal is, it does not matter what the truth is in the legal world, a.k.a the IRS or a public policy enforcer can create some fractional code violation and create a monetary value off yeah. of your chewing gum while walking on a Wednesday. That's $700. And, yeah. and he, he can create that. And you'll have to pay if you don't understand how everything works or yeah. discharge. Sorry, you can't really pay a debt because there's no lawful money. There's yeah. there, You can only really discharge debt. So, But he will create some fictional uh, amount owed out of nothing and it's legally enforceable if you don't understand how contract law works but yeah, that's how legal that. works and the difference between legal and lawful when you get into lawful that is actually justice and right and true when you get into legal it is blind ignorant and continues on to perpetuate with the public policies codes and statutes yeah it's a little vicious yeah can be or you can understand how it all works and be the king the sovereign the ultimate the um now, now of course po policy enforcers are people and some of them are very uneducated cops don't know all this stuff judges no. do Ju all the judges on the world are trained in ucc code and they know all of this stuff that i'm telling you so when you get in front of a judge that is actually somebody who is well versed in contract law and understands all this stuff some cops actually think that that little that silver badge or gold badge gives them authority to beat you in the head whenever they want or shoot you or kill you but yeah. that's not how it works they only have authority over that corporation that was created at birth and we are all tricked into thinking that we are that corporation and we operate in it as that corporation and and some judges got picked on in school I mean, sorry, some some police got picked on in school and they they have authority complex issues and they, they're yeah. taking it out on society. But yeah. they're all just people. We're all just one. And and if you understand how everything works, it's actually a really beautiful system. Yeah. Yeah, there's a definitely much bigger picture going on there in the emotional and spiritual realm that way, because it's not accidental that kind of people that get into those roles. That's for sure. Hmm. Well, we should do this again and okay. find a new layer of investigating because the days as the days unfold here on the planet, so will the uh, revelations. Um, mm. we've, been, we've been an hour now, so it's good timing. Yeah. Hopefully and, this recording actually yeah. got recorded. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Yeah. So, um, you know, my goal my desire is to see, and I know my friend David, I speak for him as well, because he's building um, a society of sovereigns and, you know, um, establishing a protective umbrella for them, as it were, although everyone has to be in their own. But, um, you know, my desire is that we, that we will gather soon and that we will come together in a Mecca of a sort is what I dream. And I dream it. And I know it's because I dream it, it must be coming. <laughs> Truly, there's no place like home. <laughs> so on that note, that's where I, you know, we, uh, all things flow from the throne of God and back to the throne of God. And I trust that. And, you know, this is the journey. And whatever it is that um, has caused it to come into this way and this design, I trust that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord God mm -hmm. Almighty according to his purpose and, and serve according to his purpose. So that's, those are the places I hide in my heart, you know, and trust that, you know, be in the realm of good and you will, well, it doesn't mean you're going to always encounter good because I've gone through a lot of persecution and trial and tribulation, but it always turns for good. Yeah. And so well, shall I've, I appreciate you uh, interviewing me and allowing yeah. me to be a part of what you're doing. Um, my, my gift of understanding to everybody is on a spiritual high level, we are already 
in one body of unity. And we get tricked into thinking that there's separation due to the false light of this world and our physical bodies and stuff like that. But and on a higher level, we are already all one into one body. And that's why I enjoy helping others because I'm literally helping myself that's come right. to higher revelations and understanding. And I'm sowing into, into myself. That's right. Yeah. I agree with you hundred percent. That's my, my spirit and my heart is always in the posture of servanthood and, um, Right now, I'm in my own personal restoration, however, and I'm building and learning, but it is geared totally towards um, the vision of restoration. You know, we got a lot of restoration work to do here, plainly. Yep. Like, look at it out there. It's crazy. crazy yes, man. Work. So, when do well, you head off to Chicago tomorrow? I head off Chicago uh, to, uh, Friday morning. Right. 